This is not for politically correct audiences or for the weak of mind. You know what you're getting yourselves into. If you don't, fuck off to PewDiePie. That's it. <laughs> Oh my god, this, this is so fucked up. I swear on my father's tombstone, this is so fucked up. So, apparently, <laughs> there's this artist, this drone artist named Katsu, who does portraits of people using his own fecal matter <laughs> as paint. I cannot wait to get into this one. Holy shite, man. Let's let's just let's Tenth circle of hell, which I know that there is one, and it's below the ninth one. You cannot, in Dante's Infernal Hell, come up with a more realistic photograph of someone who would rather put politics and Rothschild over everything else. I mean, you you, you got to be fucking kidding me, man. This is I I can't even describe how accurate this is. Eric shit! Google CEO! Crap executive officer! <laughs> oh my god! Oh. This shit is probably going to get demonetized on YouTube, but I don't give a damn at this point. Because this guy deserves a shit painting. Literally made of shit! Oh. I, I just... This... This... <laughs> Zuckerberg or Mark Puckerberg or, or Fart Zuckerberg. <laughs> How can you? <laughs> I just look, look at that. Look at this. How do you not find this funny? How? Oh my god. I can't even understand. <laughs> oh man, I can't even, man. This is this is so fucking brutally honest. This is such this is such immense savagery. I, oh my god. 
this is just so wrong on some I, I said it before this video on YouTube may get demonetized and thank God I don't put monetization on my videos anymore I'm never monetizing my videos on YouTube again people because when I was monetizing my videos you had a bunch of people claiming to be YouTube heroes and they wanted this fucking channel to get shut down, mine specifically. So I stopped monetizing any of my videos beyond this point because why the hell would I? I'm not really doing this for money. Why would I want to do this for money? I mean, look at the, and and the smile on, on Zuckerberg's face. Oh God! <laughs> Imagine the headline if you. It's just. I, I can't even, man. I can't. Oh, no! No! Graffiti artist, hacker, poop painter, known as Katsu, has revealed the latest portrait in his shithead series of fireworks. <laughs> Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg was the first to be featured, but Katsu has now turned his attention to Google Chairman Eric Schmidt. <laughs> no! Why would you do that? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I gotta go change pants. I just shot myself. I'm laughing so hard. I'll be back. <laughs> I fucked Sarah to do this night! Alright, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for that moment of the show where I show you some British redneck humor in his best. Because, let me tell you, if you came to see the right thing, then. <laughs> you're in fucking luck! <laughs> you're in fucking luck. Okay, check out this video that. Rich Wilson shared from the Facebook page named Have a Great Day. You have heard of the phrase, don't cross the line, right? How about the phrase, don't erase the line? You know, that, that phrase applies just as much as the one that has the word cross instead of erase. But you know what I'm saying. Go ahead. And view this on your it's page. Kevin, my neighbor, and he told me that they know, how to they know how to hypnotize a rooster. Ready? So you hold him like this. Watch, watch Tooster's body. Watch this. Watch his body. Oh my gosh. Watch. He's totally fixated on the line. Watch. Street one one open. Come in your pain all How long will he stay like that? A few minutes. Also, tell like a rest. Sometimes I'll stand up and stare at it and then lay down on the If we erase the line, will he wake erase up? Erase the <laughs> line. <laughs> I'm gonna try this. Is he gonna peck me? Yes, he is. Don't erase it. Don't oh erase it. Oh my gosh, it. if you erase the line. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Don't, <laughs> erase. Don't erase the line. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> hey! That's what we're talking about, man. Yo! Yeah! <laughs> oh man, this is, this is a special kind of fucked up. When a situation like that applies to a chicken, DON'T ERASE THE LINE! You understand? Simple. Now we got another picture that I'd like to show you now, and believe me, this is one of Rich Wilson's best thus far from what I can tell.
Let's take a look. Hey, um, Bert, Ernie, why do small Teddy! chicks talk the most shit? What they, what could they possibly have to get off their chest? Oh, I don't know. Um, Bernie and I are a bunch of fags. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But, but, but no, 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 no. I'm, I'm talking about other stuff. She does the choke, you get it? Oh, I get you. No, 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 never mind. Okay, bottom line is... I really... <laughs> you can tell I don't rehearse this! <laughs> Damn, this is... Oh, tell me, folks, what could small titty chicks possibly have to get off their chest? Nothing. Of course not. <laughs> it makes all this. I don't know. Fuck me. Let's go look at another post of his. I'm sure you'll like this one. Oh my God! No. Oh my God. Oh, are you kidding me? You mean to tell me this is what little kids do in Hollywood? Except this isn't Hollywood, this is probably somewhere in Florida. Um, <laughs> you'll just have to take my word for it. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so, Rich Wilson shared a post from Facebook user Zadoa Thompson and Vlog Carla Marty. Whatever the fuck this is. It's 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 basically shared a it's from a post that a group named Sarcasm and Chit or I don't know man. It's just a play on the word chitlins. Sarcasm and chitlins. Might as well just say that. Let's just let's get to it. Look like a crab. Yeah, I The hell is that? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, this is just What in the world is this? You cannot. What is that? <laughs> look at the look at the caption. <laughs> His parents will never see heaven. <laughs> oh shit! Oh, I can't even understand. Why did? Who the fuck filmed that? His parents? Because if that's the case, then this comment's perfectly justified. I don't know about you. I mean, how this might as well be California that they're filming in. My God. I don't... I don't understand this. I don't understand this! <laughs> of the week. Holy shit. You kidding me? Boy Scouts to accept gay- LOOK AT THIS! LOOK! LOOK! Boy Scouts to accept gay boys? Organization continues to disallow gay leaders? But they'll accept gay boys to be Scouts. I knew it. I knew it. I always knew that the boy and girl Scouts were half full of fags. I just knew it. And that, by the way, that's the British term for cigarettes. If you haven't lived in Britain and you don't know what a cigarette is over there, don't fucking at me! But anyway, I... This is some really disturbing shit. Grapevine, Texas, according to the Associated Piss! You might as well just say that. Local leaders of the Boy Scouts of America 
have voted to open their ranks to openly homosexual boys for the first time. But reactions from the left and right both agree that the controversies are far from owner. The scouts' long standing ban on gay adults remains in force, but you allow gay kids to join the, the scouts. I don't. Thank Christ I was not a boy scout because I probably would have been subject to some fucked up shit. Even worse than the fucked up shit that I was exposed to when a family member of mine molested my sister when I was just five. Of course, she was my twin, so she was five too. She was just older than me than 64 minutes. But, but you know, I, I don't understand this! What the fuck? <laughs> and many liberal scout leaders, as well as gay rights groups, plan to continue pressing for an end to that exclusion even though the BSA's top officials aren't ready for BULLSHIT! They aren't ready for this step! They might as well be because they are now! Thank Christ this was brought to my attention! Thank you Rich Wilson! You are a godsend, my man. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You have no idea how much this means to me, buddy. Long may you reign as the king of the meme, man. Long may you reign, my good sir. Faggot. <laughs> sir James the Tiny! Raise the alarm! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here is the moment when I officially shit on WWE. Okay. Super Showdown. I mean, I mean, no, I'm not gonna refer to it as Super Show. I'm gonna refer to it as Super Shit Show because that's what this fucking pay per view was. And I didn't even watch it, and I knew it was gonna be a shit show. Everyone in the YWC knew it was gonna be a shit show. Everyone on the internet knew it was gonna be a shit show. Everyone in the world knew. It was going to be a shit show. By the way, this is not Scully Goes Wide. This is just a continuation of an episode of Slon, Savage Level Omega Null, to extend the abbreviation. Basically, they, WWE, adverted a 50 man battle royal akin to. April of 2018's Greatest Royal Rumble, except they somehow made this one even worse than the one that came before it. So, they advert a 50-man battle royal, only to announce a 51st entrant to enter the Rumble and go on to win a damn freaking battle royal, despite being the last to enter. The 51st entrant in the Battle Royal, you're never going to guess. You're, you're, you're never going to guess. The 51st entrant in the Battle Royal is Saudi Arabian. <gasps> Please. Would you just listen? Okay. WWE will always be synonymous for and has been synonymous for the term we waste everyone. It has never been synonymous with is not now or ever will be synonymous with the term World Wrestling Entertainment.
And I got it running off. The point I'm trying to say is... WWE is the shittiest wrestling product in history. That's what I'm trying to say. Alright? Not trying to be a Debbie Downer. Not trying to be a malcontent. Not trying to be an Austin Aries or an asshole or a Jim. I'm not trying to be any of those things. I'm trying to get you guys to understand the fucking severity of this situation. Vincent Kennedy McMahon, as we all know, is a flaming closet homosexual who would rather have sex with a bunch of Samoan so-called pro wrestlers and talentless freaking hacks over his own wife of more than 50 years, Linda. People, Vincent Kennedy McMahon is a faggot. He has proven this time and 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 time again. For 35 years! Ever since that interview of Hulk Hogan that he gave in 1984. People, if you do not understand the words that are coming out of my mouth, you need to kindly remove yourselves permanently from the gene pool. This is serious fucking stuff I'm talking about. And if you're not going to take what I say seriously and understand that I'm right. What you need to do is tie a noose over your freaking neck and <coughs> that's what you need to do. Because you know nothing about professional wrestling. And I mean that metaphorically. The, the suicide reference, I meant that metaphorically and literally. Because you want, I mean, you want me to be honest, right? You want an honesty? Well, you got it. The truth hurts a lot. And the only way it's going to stop hurting is if you accept it. Super shit show had an hour-long pre-show that consistently looped the song Legends Will Rise from the alt-rock act Godsmack. I listened to a scathing review of this absolute train wreck of a waste of air time from a very, very talented, very intelligent wrestling fan in Jerry Durasmo, usernamed JD from NY206 on YouTube. Who tore into this show and gave it a new asshole. Guys, if you ever wondered why WWE has consistently sucked over the last 20 years, it's because you people continue to buy into this shit. This is why AEW is a thing. All Elite Wrestling! Okay? And I'm, I'm, I'm dead serious on this. I'm legitimately, that's, that's not to mention a 50-year-old Triple H taking on 
a still-in-his-prime Randy Orton, who, by the way, both are part-timers now. And their match was okay for what it was worth. Was it their best? Far from it. Was it their worst? No. It was somewhere in the middle. It was okay. It was meh, from what I've heard. And then you have the main event. 52-year-old Goldberg versus 54-year-old Undertaker. For the first time, two legends arise from their coma-induced slumbers to do battle in a WWE ring. Everybody shit on this match for hardly any good reason whatsoever because they did not see the value in it that I did. Granted, this was not a good match. But this match in the 9 minutes and 35 seconds that I watched of it, which is how long this match was, was easily the best match on the main roster all year. All year. Despite the fact that they had been out of their prime for over a decade and botched a lot of their moves. That's bound to happen. When two 50-something wrestlers engage in a wrestling contest, they're going to botch some of their moves. But they gave legitimately everything that they had into this. I'm surprised that neither of them ended up permanently disabled or paralyzed as a result of this. But, for what any of this is worth, I can honestly say to you, the YouTube community who are viewing this video, if any of you are at all, that Goldberg vs. Undertaker at Super Shit Show, aka Super Letdown or Super Showdown, and this is the last time I'm going to refer to this show as Super showdown Goldberg and Undertaker wrestling in a nine and a half minute match was easily the best show on the card the best match of the entire show two early to mid 50 something men despite their botches fighting in a match. What does that tell you about the entirety of the main roster? What does that tell you? If that tells you nothing, then as I said, you need to remove yourself from the gene pool permanently and kindly off yourself. And I am not joking about this. I am dead serious. Ladies and gentlemen, I do not give a dying dodo bird's last shit where you stand on this. The fact is, Undertaker and Goldberg wrestling one another in Saudi Arabia was easily the highlight of the main roster in 2019. The only highlight of the main roster. And we're not even halfway through the year yet. We're not even into the beginning of July. 
Is the main roster going to get any better with that faggoty, freaking, homosexual, closet, homo, Vincent K. McMahon in the chair? Writing the shows all by himself? Hell no. Of course it's not. And that concludes this episode of Savage Level Omega Null. Feel free to like this if you found it as entertaining as I did making it. Feel free to give me your honest critiques and your constructive criticisms and your feedback in the comments box below. I have been yours truly, Skull Media's one-man wrecking crew, Kevin the Skull Anderson. Saying goodbye for the time being. Another episode of Savage Love Omega Knowles coming whenever the hell I damn well please. Because it's my channel and I can do whatever the hell I want with it. Goodbye. <laughs>